I do think that the parent attitude can, can really be helpful in this process. Um, and it's hard because each of you have to figure out um, sort of how to approach this based on, on your own relationships with your sons and on their personalities. There's not a one-size-fits-all um, kind of approach. I think that probably one of the pitfalls for some parents, how many parents in the room have um, gone through the college process with an older child? Okay, so the good news is all of you didn't raise your hand, there are all kinds of very, you know, healthy, happy people still with hair who are here, who went through the process. How many of those of you who have gone through the process have, have only gone through it with a daughter? Okay, so maybe half of those who raised your hand. Um, and first of all, it's, it's not to say that sons will do the process the same way as one another. So if you went through the process with an older son and now you're going to go through the process with your son who's in the fifth form, um, you can't necessarily assume that those two boys are going to approach it the same way. Um, but based on my experience, you definitely can't assume that your son will approach it the same way that your older daughter did. Um, because again, they're just, they just look at things differently. Developmentally, they're in very different places. Um, one of the things that we talk about sometimes in college admissions when we're looking at young men and their transcripts, we often will say the best prediction of how a young man's going to do in college academically is really not about looking at 9th, 10th, and 11th grade, which is what we formally do, as well as the fall of the senior year. But it's really about saying, let's look at 10th and double the 11th. And that will probably be a better prediction. Because there are ninth grade boys who don't even realize they're in the ninth grade. <laughs> and it's not their fault. It's not about criticizing them for not having a good attitude. It's about where they are developmental. And it's just one of those things that, um, you know, it's kind of funny in our society, there are so many things that we sort of assume we need to understand where someone is developmentally and when something's appropriate, but not education. We sort of, it's all based on, you know, well, you were born this time, so you're going to start school and you're going to go through. And so for those of you who have had sons who may have not been at Salisbury for the whole four years, but have come in from another school and done a repeat of a ninth grade or a tenth grade or an eleventh grade year, um, congratulations, you've already made a good decision in most cases. There isn't a hurry in getting through. Um, and that's true for, for, I would say, for any high school student, but particularly for boys. A lot of them really um, will actually um, perform much better in college than they have in high school because of kind of where they are developmentally. Um, but I think that, again, part of the process, when I talk about they won't go through the process necessarily like an older sibling did, um, again, there's not a one-size-fits-all. You need to figure out what works best um, for you as a parent um, with your particular uh, child and, the, and this particular child. There are a couple things, though, that I think do apply kind of across the board. Um, certainly, the, one of the first things is that I, I hope that as parents, and particularly I'm going to say this for those of you who are going through it for the first time, um, if you can start the process with an open mind and keep your mind open as you go through the process with your son, um, it's going to be healthy for both of you. It's going to uh, make your son actually have to do um, a little more work, um, a little more research, a little more um, talking with his counselor and his teachers and maybe coaches about what might be um, appropriate, good match schools for him. Um, but it's also going to be something where um, the more open-minded you are, the less he has to resist to. Um, and there is that sort of sense of, you know, if in fact you're, you're willing to say, you know, we're open to just about anything provided that you can give us a good reason for why you've done the research and decided that school's a particularly good match. Um, I do think that that's a very appropriate thing for parents to expect of their sons. If your son comes to you and says, I've decided I want to go to the University of Alaska, um, that might be because he's done some research and that fits his interest. It might be because he's trying to find the place furthest away from where he is right now. Um, and, and the point is, is that you shouldn't let him get away with just you saying, oh, that sounds fine here. Um, but you should also not sort of screw up your face and say, Alaska, what are you thinking? You know, it's colder, there's more snow there than there is in, in Connecticut. Um, but instead of saying, well, how did you come to that? Why is that a place that interests you? Um, at the same time, your son should expect the same thing of you. As moms and dads, you absolutely should feel that you have um, the right and, and, and certainly the, um, you should be encouraged to suggest schools that you think would be a good match for your son. Um, maybe it's based on an older child's experience. Maybe it's based on a cousin or a, a neighbor or something like that or something that you've learned on your own about a particular school. Maybe you have a colleague um, that you've talked with about, about a particular school. But you too should be able to say to your son, this is why I think you ought to look at that particular school. 
you know, you are interested in this, you are talented in this particular way, um, you seem to really like people who are like this, and this school is going to be a place that, that I think you ought to at least check out. Um, so both ways, um, in terms of being able to both um, be patient and, and but expect an articulation from your son about why he's interested in a certain school, but also um, you doing the same um, when you're making suggestions. You need to find a system of communication that works for you and works for your son. And in fact, in some ways, um, you know, we're, we're in a, a time and, and now your sons are in a place where um, sometimes the best kind of communication is not conversation, at least about some topics, um, but it's through um, something like an email exchange. Um, with email, someone, each one, each person who's writing or, or, or has an opinion can get all of their thoughts out without being interrupted and without reacting to the facial expression of the person that they're communicating with. Um, and so in some ways, email can be a great thing. I've known families who email one another living in the same house. And, uh, and again, partly it's, it's an ability, to, and again, sometimes there are some students who are more comfortable really getting some of their thoughts out um, that way. Your son may not be that person. Your son might be the person who, when you pick him up at school for a break, is chattering all the way to wherever it is you live. Um, and is very forthcoming and, and talkative. And that's great. If that's the case, that'll work for you. Um, one of my colleagues um, at St. Lawrence uh, from several years ago had a son uh, going through the process, and he was quite um, stoic, would be a nice way to say it. Didn't really want to talk about the college process at all. Mom, on the other hand, wanted to talk about it a lot. And it was the summer before his senior year, and she was really feeling that he was not attending to what he needed to do in terms of getting prepared for this process. They finally came, I'm not sure how they came to this agreement, I expect she probably insisted upon it, but they came to an agreement that for five minutes a day, throughout the course of the summer, they would talk about college. And that was their agreement, and so they, they would actually really find a time where they'd go in the kitchen, they'd set the timer for five minutes, and when the timer went off, Rob had the right to walk out of the room and not talk about college until the next day when they got to Kevin. And some days that's exactly what he did. And other days the timer went off and they kept talking. And what my friend learned through that was that he was thinking about this a whole lot more than she thought he was. But he also didn't want it to be his whole life and his whole summer and the only thing he ever talked to his mom about. Um, and so it worked for them in a sort of funny way. And, and again, I think that it's uh, an extreme example, but I think it's also one of those things where most of you will find, I think, that your sons are thinking about the process perhaps. If you have sons who tend to be fairly uh, quiet about these kinds of things, they're probably thinking a lot more about it um, than you realize. 